Wow, it's great to be here. You're the kind of audience I love because I love turning people onto the beauty of nature. And I think you guys are gonna really love this. So I'm a filmmaker and what I really love to do is to explore the world and the beauty of nature. And I love shooting things that are either too small, too fast, too slow or too vast for the naked eye to see. You see, when I was at UCLA and I graduated, I didn't have much money I always wanted to shoot you know, really quality film, 35 millimeter. So I ended up doing time lapse because I could shoot one frame at a time. And that enabled me to watch flowers open, sunsets, and it really opened up my heart to the beauty of nature. And for those of you who don't understand time lapse, basically you're shooting one frame every 20 minutes. So it would take me almost a month to shoot one roll of film. And I don't think I'm ever going to get tired of watching flowers move to the light. It's something I think that'll turn me on for the rest of my life. But one of the things I learned was the fact that the bees are disappearing. I'm sure you guys have heard that, correct? It's a really serious issue. Many scientists believe that it's perhaps the most serious environmental threat we face, because if the bees go, we go. And the bees, the pollinators, you know, bats, hummingbirds, butterflies, they're, they're really the essence of what keeps the plant moving. They're the foundation of all of life. And what I learned from observing flowers and pollinators is that beauty and seduction is nature's tool for survival because we will protect what we fall in love with. That's why kittens are cute, puppies, babies, right? If they weren't all cute, you'd throw them out with the bathwater. So, it's an amazing story. I mean, this relationship between pollinators and flowers co-evolved over 50 million years. And I could say it's a love story that feeds the earth. One third of the food we eat comes from pollinating plants. And again, if they disappear, it would probably change life as we know it. So I asked my scientific advisors when I was shooting these monarch butterflies in Mexico, what motivates their behavior? And they said, well, you know, it's all about risk and reward. And I said, why? Well, because they want to survive. And I said, why? Well, they want to reproduce. And like a wide-eyed kid, I get and I go, why? And I thought they'd say something smart like, well, you know, it's all about sex. But they kind of, you know, the, you know, the scientist kind of you know, pulled on his beard and he said, well, you know what? Everything in the universe wears out. Nothing lasts forever. And that really blew my mind, because what I realized was that reproduction was something that nature created for life to move forward as a force of energy, generation after generation. I mean, we truly do live on the shoulders of our ancestors. So let me share some nectar with you from my film. It's a film that will be released hopefully next year. Meryl Streep does the uh, voiceover from the point of view of a flower. And I hope it will inspire you to plant some seeds in the pollinator garden.
Thank you. Did you uh, guys see the little baby bat hanging on the mom breastfeeding, I hope? So this mystical intersection of the animal world and the plant world is where life regenerates itself over and over again. And so then I kind of thought, well, you know, since plants are the only really solar collectors, right, it's the only thing they can take, you know, light energy from the sun and turn it into fuel, food, medicine, and shelter. And I kind of wondered, well, what, what, sus what sustains that kind of, you know, life? And, um, well, the answer is soil, right? And I kind of thought, well, what creates soil? What can decompose rock and organic matter? Well, the answer is it's the largest organism on the planet. It's everywhere. It can heal you. It can cure you. It can clean up toxic waste. It's actually right underneath your feet. It's called mycelium, which is a fiber optic fiber network that lives you know, beneath mushrooms. So let me show you a clip of a film I'm working on called Fantastic Fungi. Mushroom mycelium represents rebirth, rejuvenation, regeneration. Fungi generate soil that gives life. The task that we face today is to understand the language of nature. My mission is to discover the language of nature of the fungal networks that communicate with the ecosystem. And I believe nature is intelligent. The fact that we lack the language skills to communicate with nature does not impugn the concept that nature is intelligent. It speaks to our inadequacy for communication. If we don't get our act together and come in commonality and understanding with the organisms that sustain us today, not only will we destroy those organisms, but we will destroy ourselves. We need to have a paradigm shift in our consciousness. What will it take to achieve that? If I die trying, and, but I'm inadequate to the task to make a course change in the evolution of life on this planet, okay, I tried. The fact is, I tried. How many people are not trying? If you knew that every breath you took could save hundreds of lives into the future, had you walked down this path of knowledge, wouldn't you run down that path of knowledge as fast as you could? I believe nature is a force of good. Good is not only a concept, it is a spirit. And so hopefully the spirit of goodness will survive. So, you know, a lot of times when people see my imagery, they say, oh my God. And have you ever wondered what that means? Well, I think that when they say it, the O means it caught your attention. It makes you present. It makes you mindful. And the my means it connects with something deep inside your soul. And God, God is that thing I think we all want to be a part of, to be connected to, some kind of universal energy that celebrates life. So let me give you an example of a lot of people or some other people who have taken their passion and their focus and their mind and have found ways to celebrate life. To be a good and safe aerobatic pilot, you have to have 100% concentrated focus on the activity at hand. And that's one of the reasons that I really like what I do, is because it forces me to get rid of all the other sort of extraneous thoughts and all the little problems and all the mundane stuff that happens around you during the course of your life and get inside this tunnel and think of nothing else but flying the airplane. And that's true focus. The speed 
speed is like nothing else. It just gets the adrenaline flowing. You know, you can't really have fear. Basically, fear causes hesitation. Hesitation will make your worst fears come true. Definitely my upbringing when I was younger helps in my work ethic. Growing up, I actually was a little dyslexic, so grammar school was pretty tough for me. Just getting through that. Learned how to deal with things and learned how to overcome things and basically helped me out a lot when I got involved in doing the racing because I was met with a lot of obstacles there and just kind of bulldog my way through it all. I love to climb mountains, ice climb. And that's pretty wild, I guess, for a blind person. I mean, being a blind mountain climber is sort of like being a Jamaican bobsledder. You know, the words don't necessarily go together. I'm scanning my tools up the ice, and I'm trying to use the end of my tools as though they are extensions of my hands, where I'm actually feeling through the metal picks of my tools. And when I find something I think is a good hit, I'll just tap it and I'll listen to the sound, and if it's a good sound, then I'll swing. And I think life is just sort of an ongoing process of reaching out into the darkness when you really don't know what you're gonna find. Thank you. So as we've seen, these people use focus to make them present and they're following your passion. And nature has been my greatest teacher. I think it opens your heart and helps you cultivate appreciation and gratitude. So the future belongs to all of you and I want you to protect what you fall in love with. You know, we're all different, we all have different passions but if you find your path, you'll never lose your way. Thank you. Thank you.